rocking the booth. We're mugging for life, we're mugging for truth. Small gold here, and he's spitting the facts about the pumper community and the way that they act. We're mugging for life, we ain't playing the games. We all know the lies, and we all know the names. Come on. Mugging for life. Mugging for life. Small gold. Hello and welcome to another Small Gold live stream. Today is Tuesday, the 27th of August, 2019, and tonight's topic, why silver is breaking out. Well, for those who've been listening to this channel, it's no surprise why silver is breaking out. I do not follow the typical silver pumper narratives that silver is so useful in our lives and the gold-silver ratio is unsustainable. I've never followed those narratives. My contention all along has been silver is not a monetary metal. Silver is not money, period. Silver contains or maintains a small sliver of investment demand. Now, because silver is a small market, if that investment demand gets ignited, then the price could rise. Since 1974, silver has underperformed gold for a very major reason. From 1934 to 1974, gold was on a quasi-gold standard, the Bretton Woods Agreements, whereby the gold price was fixed at $35 an ounce and Americans could not own it. Well, that kind of put a cap on the price of gold and it also kept the gold-silver ratio pretty low because silver was allowed to float. Gold was not. Since 1974, Americans can buy gold starting December like 15th or so, 1974. Those are the periods of time from then until now that I think are the most apples to apples. You can't go when there was a bimetallic standard in the 19th century when the government fixed the gold-silver ratio at 16 to 1. That's irrelevant. That was done by government. There were different mining techniques back then. You would have these major fines and flood the market with gold in 1849. Flood the market with silver in the 18, mid right after that when they found a lot of silver in Nevada. Today, the stockpiles of gold and silver are relatively stable, and the amount of gold or silver that comes to market doesn't add that much like it used to to the existing stockpiles. So, silver, since it has been demonetized totally out of the coins, out of the silver certificates by 1968, out of the coins by 1965, out of European and Canadian coins by the late 60s, early 70s, Silver is no longer considered a monetary metal. In fact, copper and nickel have a stronger monetary claim today than silver does. Why? They use copper and nickel in coins today. They do not use silver. So silver as money doesn't exist. It is no longer a medium of exchange. It's not readily acceptable anywhere. It has a monetary history and a small portion of its demand is investment demand. And we have seen in recent weeks, recent months, especially in the last six weeks, a big increase in the amount of silver that's flowing into not the U.S. Mint or other coin or bullion dealers, but into ETFs and COMEX vaults, indicating that silver is catching investors, large investors' attention. Now, why is silver catching this attention? Again, if you've been listening to this channel for years, my contention has always been, because history has borne it out since 1974, that when gold, which has maintained its monetary uh, component from demand, meaning that since 1971, when Nixon took the world off the gold standard, Central banks didn't say, okay, well, we'll just from now on, we'll just trade in dollars and we won't hold on to gold. Central banks decided not to give up their gold and to hold on to their gold and to continue to hold it as a reserve asset. And we've seen more recently that central banks, not just Russia and China and Kazakhstan, in the last year, central banks have added gold to the reserves. Countries import lots of gold. So gold is maintained 
a 40 to 50 percent demand uh, component of its in, if its overall demand is for investment either by individuals, institutions, central banks holding on to gold. As we mentioned, silver's is much smaller, 5, 10, maybe 15 percent. But what we've said all along, and I said at the beginning of the year, silver, there is no argument for silver to go higher unless gold goes higher, absent silver having some independent reason for it to go higher, meaning that there's some industrial demand, not yoga pants, not puts in silver solvent. Silver is so useful, and it is finding more uses for it every day. Those are generalities. Industrial silver, they are using it more and more in electronics. Yes, but electronic demand is down for silver. Unless there was something in the industrial side that was going to cause a spike in silver demand, silver wasn't going to go up. And it wasn't going to go up because the gold-silver ratio was too high. I said that the silver would rise if gold this year, and go back to January when I made the prediction, and I'm saying it even before then, if gold gets past that threshold of 1375, which it had been unable to do for six years, and got over 1400 and got to 1500 and it looked like gold was in a sustainable bull market, then you would start to see silver, that monetary dormant component, catch a bit of the fire. And today, really, for the first time, we had a day where gold and silver rose, but gold tri silver tripled the rate of increase that gold did. That is a sign of a breakout. Gold has been outperforming silver to the upside pretty much every single day for the last year. Gold has actually gone higher past its 1375, past 1400, past 1500. Silver had trouble getting back over and staying over 16 and then 17. But today was a decisive move for silver. 53 cents higher. That's 3% raise. Closed at 1817. That's exactly what you want to see silver do once gold has asserted itself well above at the 1375 mark. So now what we're starting to see today, and we'll look for some follow through. It might not happen tomorrow, might not happen this week, but if gold stays above 1500, grinds higher, if it gets to 1600, you will see that gold silver ratio start to narrow. So let's take a look. Now, what's causing gold to rise? Because gold caught on first and caught fire first, well, it all has to do with, let's look at the one-day chart for gold. That was the one-day chart for silver. Uh, it all has to do with not just the Chinese-U.S. trade tensions, but the understanding that the Fed has stopped, is not going to keep raising rates. The rest of the world is not even thinking about raising rates. The rest of the world has actually gone into negative rates. The amount of overall debt in the world has gone from 10 trillion to 17 trillion in negative interest rates in, since May. Uh, the United States, which was the one holdout, the Fed, which had, again, something I had predicted back in 2015, when I said they would raise rates, and the reason they needed to raise rates was because they needed some space between themselves and the other central banks if they wanted to continue to draw capital into the dollar, draw capital into the U.S. capital markets, to draw capital in to drive demand for U.S. treasuries because there was a fear that people would stop buying U.S. treasuries. That's all been reversed since 2015, and the Fed actually made a good show of it. They drove interest rates over 2%. Again, I said in 2015, 16, 17, they would raise them. Everyone would say, they could never raise rates. They won't raise rates. And when they raised them eight times, well, people thought they were going to raise them more, so I'm still right. No, you're not right. You're wrong. Maybe you're not wronger, but you're still wrong. You're not righter than someone who also was wrong. But in any event, now we're at a point where the Fed, the only reason they would raise rates right now, there was a op-ed by former New York Fed President Dudley, would be to screw, the, <laughs> to screw Trump. But central banks right now realize that they can't raise rates anymore. They don't want to raise rates anymore. They're all in agreement that they have to keep things loose. Now, the Fed has decided they're going to keep things loose, at least if you read the minutes, and we 
did a whole show on, we went through every page of those minutes. What they were really talking about wasn't so much lowering rates, but figuring out a way how they could buy print money and buy more assets because they think they actually were too cautious during the last QEs. They could have gotten more aggressive. They could have bought more. They learned how to do it. They learned how to drive drunk and nothing happened. So now they're saying, well, we can probably do it again. It's that background where there is not one central bank in the world that is saying, this is too much. We got to slam the brakes on. We got to raise interest rates. We got to stop QE. We got to go into quantitative tightening. None of them are saying that. They're all talking about what they can buy next, where interest rates could go. And negative interest rates are great. Why? Because I don't think they're great. I mean, they're great for them. Because one of the problems with this massive debt burden that we see in the world is there's interest that has to be paid. And that's a problem. It's not going to be a problem if they go to negative rates. That's going to be the problem of the poor suckers who buy those bonds and have to pay interest on them. Well, this solves the central bank issue. Why? The debt rolls over, the, the interest paying debt rolls over into uh, debt that the person who takes out the bond has to pay interest on, thereby eliminating at least the interest component of the debt problem. Now, the United States got a long way to go because they're still at 2%. They can drop rates, they can do QE, they can do a lot of things. Well, where does that leave gold? It's in the best position it can be. Why? Gold doesn't pay interest, but the bonds charge you interest. So that whole argument about gold doesn't pay interest, gold is, is stupid, it doesn't do anything, well, at least it doesn't lose money just by sitting around. And also, even a negative yielding bond can still go bankrupt. Gold can't go bankrupt. So people are starting to realize, institutional investors are starting to realize, I got to park money. Same with, the, same with these central banks. If I'm going to park some money somewhere, might as well park it in something that's proven to be a store of value. That's not Bitcoin. That's not Litecoin. None of these digital assets. It's basically gold. Well, silver does share some of the components of gold. But let's just take a look at the 24-hour price chart. And we saw 3% increase in silver, only a 1% increase in gold. Now, it's an aggressive move. It's up to 14, 1542. That is the high of the year and that's a well over a six year high but silver's move is more impressive but let's kind of pull out a bit now that's just the 24 hour price let's now look at the what happened to the gold silver ratio just today you know the unsustainable was clearly sustainable and they were saying oh it's unsustainable at 50 to 1 60 to 1 70 to 1 81 90 to 1 no it always was sustainable at those prices as long as gold was not really going anywhere. If gold, when gold goes nowhere, <laughs> silver gets left behind nowhere, and that's not a good place to be. And and when gold goes down, silver goes down even more. But when gold catches that bid, that monetary bid, that investment bid, that safe haven bid, and it starts to grind higher, that's when people take their glasses off and they say, "What about this silver over here?" Here's the issue everyone has to be on the lookout. If you buy into this theory, which I don't know if it's even a theory, it looks like a fact, that silver runs after gold, every time it's happened, it's spiked, it caught up quick, fast, in a hurry, it spikes, and then it dives. And that's because silver becomes, it looks like, people catch its attention, it becomes the new gold for a while, the temporary gold, that monetary component gets ignited since 1974. I'm not talking about before then. And for a short period of time, investors are enamored with the fact that gold, I mean that silver, is a cheaper form of gold and it can give you a higher bang for the buck. The problem is when it spikes, if it does spike and it much faster than gold, that's going to attract selling. Boom. And then down it goes. Now that could be selling either via naked shorts, it could just be general selling, it could be probably a combination of the two. Silver is a tiny market and it can get crushed. It doesn't matter how much interest there is because it's 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 a small market. So it's going to rise on the upside faster if there's interest and it's going to crash harder on the downside. So the real question everyone has to ask themselves, I don't know the answer to it. If silver rises again this time, will it hold its gains 
or would you be smart to ditch it for gold or something else? Now, the difference this time, every time is different. When people use that cliche, oh, I bet it's different this time, isn't it? That's become a cliche to mean it's not different this time. Everything is different. Here's what I mean by it's different. When gold rose to its peak in 2011, when silver rose to its peak in 2011, the dynamic was the Fed and the United States were leading the world, along with China, out of the, quote, global depression, global recession. And the way they were doing it was China was just pouring money in infrastructure projects, borrowing money, pouring concrete, wherever they could. And the United States was doing this QE and lowering interest rates to zero. The price fell in 2011 in April for both gold and silver, but QE was still raging. And when QE3 was announced in September of 2012, most people thought we've gone off the deep end now. It's over. You might as well just pack it in and just buy gold and silver because they are going to devalue the currency. And if it's the dollar that they're devaluing and the rest of the world sees this, they're going to sell their treasuries, dumping treasuries. All that was valid back then. It's not valid now. They were going to dump treasuries, de-dollarize. The whole thing was going to collapse, and you might as well hold the gold and silver. But a curious thing happened. QE3 did not drive gold and silver to higher um, heights. In fact, continued to go down. And that's because... In my opinion, the United States decided it wasn't going to let that happen. They were going to knock down the prices of gold and silver. They were going to do QE, but they were going to let the world know QE was going to end. Not only was QE going to end, they were going to taper it. They did that for a year. It was going to end, and then they were going to raise rates, and they were going to normalize rates and, and run off their balance sheet. That's what they kept telling people, even while they were doing QE. So the understanding there was, ah, the Fed's got this under control you don't need gold and silver and especially you don't need silver and so gold and silver fell for that period here's what's different this time back then not only was the united states saying they were going to end it the other countries weren't doing it ecb had never done qe japan had ended its qe china who knows just getting started but since then ECB tacked on QE. That QE is now bigger than the United States QE ever, QE ever was. Bank of England went to down to zero interest rates. They were buying bonds. Japan launched a huge QE. So we started to see the rest of the world do it while the U.S. started to raise interest rates. Well, guess what's happening now? No end in sight for the... Um, up this one there's no end in sight for any of those countries qe china is in a perpetual stimulus mode devaluing the yuan increasing infrastructure in their own country that they don't need going out on the built-in road and trying to build more stuff that no one needs borrowing money like mad every country is just decided to throw in a towel and they're going to print their way out of this they're going to negative interest rate their way out of this they're going to do whatever it takes and now the Fed is saying, or at least Trump is saying, yeah, what the hell? why do we got our rates up this high? It makes sense that we got to pay something, but why is everybody not paying any interest? Why are we two full points ahead of everybody else? This is exactly what I was talking about, what the Fed wanted to do. That's why I said they would raise rates because it does create demand for U.S. Treasuries, which is important. It creates capital increase into the United States. And that's why the Fed may not just go down to zero and then go to negative. It's why they're talking about they sounded so giddy, so excited in the last Fed minutes when they did cut rates just a quarter point about what type of things they could buy. They really want to talk about buying stuff. Well, that's just as bad as negative interest, as lowering rates. It's actually worse. They just print up money and they buy whatever. And again, that's good news for gold. But let's look at the silver price. Finally, look at this. This is the one-year silver price. Finally up 15% year over year. I had to draw it in. They didn't, today's price action didn't catch it uh, up in time for today's show. But you could see the silver price moving up finally year over year. Let's now go to the five-year silver price. Now, this tells a bit of a different story. That five-year silver price has not, you know, we, we've been here before. We were here in early 2017. We were there early 
well, we were at seventeen fifty in two thousand and eighteen, but we did catch almost twenty one dollars in uh, the Brexit summer of two thousand and sixty. Amazing, they haven't finished Brexit yet, but that's when they voted on Brexit. So silver has a way to go. Gold's already spiked past its six year highs. Um, just today, silver passed its two year high of two thousand and seventeen. Well, it's it's right at it now. I mean, the it was it got to eighteen fifty in in uh, looks like March of two thousand seventeen. It's about where we are now. Let's check the price. We're at eighteen sixteen, so we're still below that. Um, so silver has a way to go, but that's the five year chart. Now, if you compare the five year chart in gold, there you go, way past, way past. Any high, see that 1350, 1375 mark. That was we we're bouncing up against that in 2016, 2017, and 2018 and 2019. That 1350 mark was a tough nut to crack, but once it passed that, you could see those vertical lines. I had to draw today's line in again. You could see to the far right of the chart, all the way up to 1550. It says last close 1503, but it doesn't include today's price. So we're in a position now where the, let's look at the five-year gold-silver ratio, where gold is clearly taken off. The gold-silver ratio is still 84 to 1. It was 88 to 1 yesterday. It did go down to 84.96 today. But you can see it's back in 2016 when silver hit that 21, almost $21 mark. Gold-silver ratio was still very high. It was at 66. I would say if, if gold, again, goes to 1,600, 1,700, 1,800, forget the gold-silver ratio, you'll start to see, I don't know what it'll be, I haven't calculated, but silver will get over 20. It'll probably get over 25 if silver if gold gets to 1,800. Now, if gold were to get past its all-time high, which there's no reason it should, I'm not making investment advice or prediction, but given the current environment where there doesn't seem to be any official resistance at any central bank to gold going higher, they don't seem to care. They, the United States was like, okay, if the gold goes higher, that means the dollar goes lower. That's what we want. That's what Trump wants. Everyone else wants to lower their currency. They all seem to be in that mindset. The only thing that can change is if a major central bank says, this is enough, we're going to break wind, and we're going to break rank here, and we are going to change the game. We're going to be game changers, and we are going to tighten it up causing others to tighten up. But as long as all the central banks are looking to either print more money to buy more assets in larger amounts or lower interest rates to negative or below, I don't see how investors won't, not all of them, but some of them will decide, ah, I'm not going to park my money in uh, negative yielding bonds. I may buy U.S. treasuries, but there comes a point that buying U.S. treasuries and if the Fed decides to raise rates, the dollar index can only go so high. They don't want it to go any higher. So I think there's a limit to how much safe haven dollar buying there can be if the United States is actively working against its own currency. But remember, the Swiss franc, they've done that too. They've been actively trying to devalue their currency to very little success because people still want it. And then they went out and they bought a lot of U.S. stocks. They bought like a billion dollars and they went up. So that helped the frack as well. So, But still, I do think that the environment is right for gold. And again, if the environment right is right for gold, and it's because of, it's not because of jewelry demand at that point, and if the environment is right for gold for monetary investment, well, that's that. remember, there's that component of silver. And I'm not changing my tune. I've always said this. The tune is not changed. I haven't... Be, you saw when I did the Silver Doctors interview a couple months ago, I said I've gotten bullish on silver. I don't believe that silver all time for seven years has had, it's always had the potential, but there was nothing to believe that it was set to skyrocket because the the gold-silver ratio, the unsustainable gold-silver ratio is out of whack, or for any reason, oh, they're putting it in yoga pants or solar panels or electronics. We couldn't live our lives without silver. That's all just mumbo-jumbo. There's no data behind that. Copper is useful. Tin is useful. Aluminum is useful. They're finding more uses for copper and nickel every day. In fact, there is an argument for nickel to go higher because there's going to be massive nickel demand because a lot of batteries and a lot of electric cars and so on. But that's a different point. 
the idea, and I don't, and I haven't quantified that, so I, I'm not even going to make that statement. But when people just throw out there how valuable silver is and we need it and they're finding new uses for every day, those are generalities. You've got to look at the numbers. The numbers are not there to support massive silver demand. What is there is historically, since 1974, a very strong argument that silver catches a monetary or an investment bid when gold does. But gold goes first. And I did a early 2018, I did a interview with Future Money Trends, and we talked about uh, silver needing gold's permission to rise. This is, this is not a change just because the price is going up. I'm not jumping on any bandwagon. This is exactly what I would expect. And what I'd also expect, as I mentioned, if gold does start to rise even more, silver will play catch up a lot faster. But then you got to worry historically, and I don't know the answer to this question, if silver makes a vertical run, See, there's even odds it makes a vertical drop. That's the spike and dive nature it always has. Now, the counter argument to that is maybe it won't. Maybe because it won't make as sharp of a rise higher. Maybe it just grinds higher. Gold-silver ratio doesn't come down as much as, as it did last time. Silver doesn't go from 18 to 50 in three or four months. It goes from 18 to 24, 25, and it holds there. That would be much healthier. If silver could somehow maintain that it is a monetary asset, something to hold during this maybe multi-year, maybe multi-decade period where central banks just buy stuff and have negative interest rates, well, then silver could hold, hold on to its gains. But that I don't know. My prediction is just that go, if gold goes higher, silver will go higher faster. And if it spikes, it may dive. But Again, this time it might be different. That's not a cliche to say, no, it's not. Just because silver spiked and dived or spoked and dove the last couple of times doesn't mean it's going to do so this time. But this is very pattern driven. Um, and we saw if you, that chart on gold. It tells the story. Because gold did not break out, there was no reason for silver to break out. Unless there was some massive demand elsewhere for Silver, which didn't exist other than in the pumper stories. There was no, there was nothing going on in silver. I don't care, solar panels, electronics, yoga pants, whatever you want to say. There was no spike in demand and there really was no spike, no real decline in supply. And the trading on the COMEX is pretty much what it always was. Other than when never happened before, historic <laughs> The commercials have gone net long. That's only because they were net short for six months because the price dropped for so long. And that didn't have any impact on the price of silver. What's going to have an impact on the price of silver are COMEX traders catching on to the fact that silver could be ready to run because gold is running, because ETFs are swelling with silver as are COMEX vaults. And that just creates an environment where Certain investor may look at silver, but they may be looking at it for a speculative short-term trade and not viewing it, and there's no reason for them to view it as a long-term store of value because it hasn't been the same long-term store of value since 1974 that gold has been. Gold has crushed the dollar. No, gold has crushed silver over the last uh, 15, 20 years. But again, it could be different this time. Let's see what you guys think about Silver's prospects, but those are my thoughts on why it's risen. Um, they're tied into what I've been saying, the potential for silver to rise is based on gold catching a bid. Um, I'm not a perma bull on gold or silver, but I'm more a perma store of value for gold than I am silver. I think right now silver probably has the edge as the speculative metal. But I don't think that it is uh, going to be the one that everyone turns to in a crisis that they want to hold. Um, unless that crisis is some type of long-term crisis whereby silver has, you know, silver can perhaps solidify itself as a um, store of value. Let's see what you guys think. By the way, if you enjoyed this or any of the other small gold videos... I'm trolling for patrons. I have 20 now. Not as many as some of our friends, but uh, far less than many of our friends. I don't know anyone who has less that has 4,000 YouTube subscribers. Um, 
Really appreciate the 20 that we have. Also, subscribe star, PayPal, Bitcoin, Litecoin, checks, money orders, certified checks, gold, silver, cash. Can be sent to Smogold LLC, P.O. Box 714, Dover, New Hampshire, 03820. Do appreciate the support of the channel. Of course, if you don't have a game changing mug, Step on over to smallgold.com or below this bit shoot in YouTube. There are links to how to buy small gold mugs, beer steins, and so on. Hats, dog balls. We've got everything there that does help the site out. And also, it really helps the site out if you're going to buy precious metals to buy them through the links from Golden Eagle Coin, Money Metals Exchange, and SD Bullion. You can compare pricing and shipping. If you're going to buy precious metals, I'm not advising you to do that. If you're going to do it, know what you're doing or if you don't know what you're doing but you think you know what you're doing and you're going to buy gold and silver uh, please consider shopping at those sites small gold gets a small commission and uh, let's see what you guys are saying in the comments section all right so Ra Ra Rasputin asks is small gold finally admitting that silver is a monetary metal I've always said it's not money it used to be money and I've said it's maintained a monetary slash investment component, but that component is very small. And if there's nothing going on, nothing dramatic, where people are rushing in to gold or silver, then there's no reason for uh, silver to rise higher unless its industrial demand is skyrocketing or people are rushing into silverware, which they're not only Indians by that for the most part, or um, let's see what else. Airrail Blackwig, I actually appreciate it. Silver take for its historic cyclical nature, but there is a possibility that gold may spike in unprecedented fashion, dragging AG along with it, which is new turf. Well, that could happen, that's for sure. Here comes the music. Mint Mark, plastic is so useful in our lives. That's right. We cannot leave our lives without plastic. We hold plastic in our hands every day. There is plastic in every cell phone. I am measuring my wealth in mortar bottles. Yeah, you see, when you listen to pumper channels, which... I'd say 90%, maybe more. I'd say all of them almost. I, I don't want to say all because it may offend somebody who's not pumping. But most of your precious metals channels, your crypto channels, it's just a pump festival. And for most people, that's what they want to hear. They think they're smart. Like they think some, like someone will think I'm dumb because I don't permanently like silver. Well, he's not smart. Why? They measure intelligence by whether you agree with them or not. So if someone agrees with you, they're smart. If someone disagrees with you, they got to be dumb because they don't think like you do, which is probably one of the dumbest way of looking at things. A very short, short side. There's smart people that disagree with me, um, and there's dumb people that agree with me. And the same for you guys. That's just how it works. Someone holding your point of view does not make them smart, but people like to hear what they want to hear. And most of the channels, not only, and this is why we have these divisions. Every people like to look at things binary. I find it fascinating that there are people who love silver and hate gold and vice versa, people like like Bitcoin and hate gold, people who like gold and silver and are just mad at cryptocurrencies. I, I don't have this asset adoration, this silver is better than gold and gold is better than silver. When I talk about, people actually think, they think like I, like I personally hate silver. When I was making those points, why gold was doing better than silver and why I didn't think the gold-silver ratio was unsustainable. I thought it was justifiably sustainable and probably would go up. And I was saying for three years it would go up, and it did go up. That didn't mean I hated silver. It meant I saw the flaw in the thinking of why silver should be higher. Why should silver be higher? Because they use it in yoga pants? Because it's so useful in our lives? I didn't see that. Because it's money, period? No, it's not. That doesn't mean it's not valuable. This, I, this other thing, people get obsessed. Gold is money, period. That is all I need to know. Silver is money. Well, palladium isn't money. No one even says it is, and it outperforms silver and gold. Just because you think something is money, especially when it's not, doesn't give it value. But it's money. It's money. Okay. First of all, it's not. If you go by your definitions of money, two components are not met. That it is uh, widely acceptable... And used as a medium of exchange. But it can be in a barter situation. Well, we're not in a barter situation. And in fact, I did a matrix showing that silver was the preferred asset to have when the lights go out. Because that component, that's another dormant component of silver, is its use in a non-digital, non-electronic world. It's better than gold. Why? 
there's more of it. It's more divisible. Uh, like these dimes, I'm going to play with them every night now that I received as a gift. I'll pour them out. These are the best items you can have. Small amounts of silver. If I, this was small amounts of gold, I'd be rich. A dime to have in front of me here that were given me as a gift. Worth about $70. Um, they're perfect sizes. So, so, but the thing is, they're not convenient right now. Why? I can't spend these as like a dollar, dollar ten each. No one's going to take them. People say, oh, I'll take them. I can't go to the store and use these dimes. I could use them for ten cents, but I can't use them for anything more than they're actually worth. That means they're not money. But they are money. They've been money since 5,000 years. The word for money in French is, they just say all this stuff. In the world today, silver is got no monetary value. It's got dormant monetary value. Yes, if the lights go out, or if the digitization doesn't work, or the banks don't work, then this silver I have right here is worth a lot more, and it is becomes money. But right now, no one's willing to pay a lot of money, or a lot of fiat dollars, or a lot of anything, to have these dimes worth more than a buck or so each. That's a very important point, but if you want to listen to a pumper channel, They'll tell you, it's money, period. You don't know what you're talking about. It's been money since 5,000 years. Okay. Well, go put a toga on and live like the Romans. I mean, we're not in those times. All right. What else? Plastic oil. Where's Barry? Silver is rarer than gold, says Paul Callaghan. Yeah. Silver is not rarer than gold. Uh, small gold. Is the Fed allowed to buy physical gold? That is a very, very great question that I do not know the answer to. The Fed does not hold any gold. The Fed, um, well, it holds in its vaults gold for other countries, and it does hold for the benefit of the United States Treasury some gold at the New York Fed. But the United States gold is held by the U.S. Treasury at different locations in the United States, including Fort Knox. There's no reason today, with everything we've been talking about, why the Fed would go out and buy gold, other than if they wanted to drive the dollar down, which they don't seem to want to do. Um, no, and that would drive, I'm sorry, that would drive the dollar up. There's no reason for them to sell the U.S. Treasury's gold. And even then, that wouldn't drive, I mean, the United States dollar, we've saw, we saw this last night. The amount of gold in a country's coffers as reserves really has no bearing on the value of that country's currency. So Kazakhstan now is 60%. They've piled the gold on to the Kazakhstan tenge, whatever it's called. The currency keeps going down. doesn't matter how much gold they had. Canada dumped its gold. It didn't really harm its currency. Um, Russia keeps adding gold. It's not helping the currency at all. So I don't think the Fed would even think of using gold purchases for their own account. Um, the Treasury would have to make the decision to sell gold, which I don't think they would do. I don't think they're interested in drawing attention to gold in any way. That's a good question, but I don't think any central bank is, is thinking of selling gold. They used to. In fact, we did a show on this. They used to have, for the last 20 years, agreements amongst themselves not to sell certain amounts. And the reason there was they all wanted to agree to keep gold as part of the monetary system. The reason they did not renew those agreements was that they felt that uh, enough countries were more interested in buying gold than selling gold, so they didn't even need to bother with that. So that's another positive sign for gold that central banks, while they're not necessarily going on this, they're buying gold hand over fish. You hear that too. That's not really true. The only countries that are buying decent amounts of gold are Russia and Kazakhstan, and they mine it themselves. Um, the other gold purchases that we found have been pretty minimal. They've been one-offs. We've seen India... Hungary, Poland, Kurzak Republic, but we're not seeing massive. The, still, the bulk of the gold being added is People's Bank of China now adding 10 tons a month, Russian Central Bank adding about 20 tons a month, and then Kazakhstan adding about 5 tons a month. In the grand scheme of gold demand, it's not that much. It's about, recently, it's only like 8 to 10% of overall current gold demand. All right, what else do we have? Yep, the ratio is up higher now, Dibble says. And says, and here. Marcus Aurelius, silver at $18. What's going on here, Vince Lombardi? 
Okay, Dibble says, I wonder what this week's commitment of traders report will look like after today for silver. Who wants to do Saturday night silver with small gold? Take a look at that. I'll pull up that chart. We can look at that, Dibble, if you'd like. Let me know in the comments, and that's what we'll do Saturday night. We'll get all those numbers. Yep, Broadsworth calling is right. Global negative interest rate into gold, which leads silver. Bingo. That's it. But more importantly, it's a game changer. Where's Barry? Small you should just add to your mocking pumper stick if every American just bought two ounces. Yeah, I did the numbers on that. I did a whole show on it. I even went on uh, Rory Gallagher. What's his not Rory Gallagher. That's the guitarist. Rory Hall's um, The Daily Coin and discussed that. Yeah, Americans don't save in physical silver. They don't save in physical anything. But if they did, um, I calculated that if just, I think it was like 2 to 5% of the American... Not, not every American, just Americans with jobs. Um, working age people bought you know, an ounce or two a week. It would eat up more than half of the global silver mining production. And that's why they don't offer it. They don't offer... Uh, one of the things that it is true, the United States took the view, Kennedy first and then Johnson. Kennedy said that silver serves no monetary purpose other than for making coins and is too valuable as an industrial metal for ha to have us lock it up hoarding it uh, for purposes of redeeming silver certificates. He was totally against this non That's another nonsense story. Oh, Kennedy was shot because he wanted to issue debt-free notes and the Fed had him shot. Complete. That, that story is complete BS. I've done a show on that as well. Those U.S. notes that he, that he issued, he didn't issue them. They were... <laughs> Didn't want to get into this, but they were an act issued through an act of Congress of 1878, and they had to be refreshed every few years, and he happened to do a refreshment of them. They had nothing to do with Kennedy sending a message to the Fed. He wanted to lead America out of the debt-based fiat Ponzi scheme. No, he had nothing to do with it. In fact, the only person who actually agrees with me, because they're not a conspiracy theorist, is uh, G. Edward Griffin. He read the same documents I did. The guy who wrote Creature from Trekkel Line, he said, that's just complete nonsense. In fact, it's the opposite. Kennedy favored Federal Reserve notes. The, the red notes, the debt-free notes are just a red herring. He had to issue those. Um, he favored Federal Reserve notes, and he wanted to get rid of the silver certificate because he saw the industrial demand coming for uh, silver. And when after he died, not because the Fed came. Now, there's there's theories, and I can, I, I, I cannot go with the Fed theory because he was actually working for the Fed by trying to demonetize silver and favoring Federal Reserve notes. I can believe any other conspiracy theory. I can believe the CIA because he screwed up beta pigs. I can believe the mafia because his Bobby Kennedy went after uh, the mob members. I can believe it was Johnson. I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not saying I endorse any of these, but I will reject that it was somehow the Fed. And the people who believe this nonsense say, oh, the Fed also killed uh, Kennedy, uh, Lincoln, didn't they? I'm like, no, the Fed didn't exist when Lincoln. Oh, but the bankers, okay. Anyway, the idea is that uh, silver is important for industrial use, and that's why Kennedy was against. And by the way, those, re those debt free notes, if supposedly. Kennedy was shot for trying to issue them and sending a message to the Fed that we weren't going to have um, debt-based fiat uh, Federal Reserve notes. Well, Johnson issued them too in 1967, so there was no message. And then they finally got rid of them by 1980. Separate issue had nothing to do with Kennedy being against the Fed. All right, Everell Blackwig. If the Fed decides they go after Trump by not cutting rates, today's headline. Yeah, that was ridiculous with Dudley. Think Trump could counter by declaring silver a tier one asset? No. I mean, the, the whole point of silver is it's an industrial metal. Um, there is a small portion of the world that will take a look at it. I'm not talking, you got to remember, the people that watch silver pumper channels, they don't run the world's finances. I mean, there was all this talk. Well, after the new paradigm, we're going to be the new oligarchs. <laughs> okay, sure you are. I'm going to take my monster box and go buy a block of houses, just like they did in Germany. I mean, these are delusions. And they're selling you silver. Anyone who tells you that is selling you silver. I've never heard anyone actually believe that. Oh, yeah. Maybe buy 2015 monster box. Maybe 200 ounces. Buy a single family home. Oh, I'm never selling my silver. I'm just going to lend it out. And I'll be an oligarch. And I'll own... Uh, 
Nevada, I'll own Kansas, I'll own a few states, but I'm never selling my silver. Okay. No, I don't think that they would go. <laughs> it's amazing. People want to believe this stuff. They listen to it and they believe it. All right, what else do we got in the comments? Uh, another one, Avril Blackwell. You're on my patron to-do list. Only one site ahead of me first. Who could possibly be ahead of the small gold site with his minimal 20 patrons? But thank you very much. I hope I do get you on that list. Yesterday's vid was great. Kazakhstan has surpassed Portugal. Yeah, well, there you go. There's an example. Kazakhstan's adding gold hand over fist. What do they know that we don't know? They know that they have a gold mine in their backyard. That's what they know. Makes total sense for Kazakhstan to add uh, gold. Max Strong is here. And, by the way, I have been coming on. And you know what? I, I, I'm sorry, and Maybe you didn't get the memo. I made a long story about why I'm... I mean, I've seen so much abuse on YouTube. I'm really fed up with the channel. Fed up... Not big, nothing really. It never done nothing to me. Um, and I don't really... I don't get into social topics. I don't talk about... Uh, I didn't want to say words. I mean, you say certain words in... in they're flagged them, so I'm not even going to say these words, which disturbs me that I can't say certain words, even though I'm not even going to talk about them. Um, so I decided that um, I was going to do most of my stuff on BitChute. And I, still, I, and I believe that that's the right thing to do. The problem is, no other... I, and I also, when I go on social media, I don't post the YouTube. I post the BitChute. Everybody else complains and complains and complains. Then they, they complain about YouTube, and then they post. And once they actually get censored and get demonetized, I don't even have monetization on. That's why I'm asking for patrons. They they post their YouTubes. All they're doing is they're helping YouTube out. I don't understand. So anyway, the reason I came back onto the live streams, and is I also realized as abuses of they as they have been in an, une, in an uneven handedly way in which they go after people. For, and they don't even tell you why. Um. That because they have that 230 exemption, and because they were given money by the United States and startups and subsidies, that it is a public platform and I'm entitled to use it. Um, now, I don't have to give them to support them, but I'm entitled to use it, so I'm using it. And then what I do is I download this stuff and post post on another platform, and then I re-social media those. So to the extent that anybody wants to watch this stuff the next day, what I do is on smoggle.com. I don't put the YouTube video up on it. I put it up on my site. If you're a subscriber, you get it and you get the bit shoot. If you follow me on Twitter or on Facebook or any other social media, I don't post the YouTube. The only reason now I'm using it now is because to get new new people on and some of the old people refuse. They just they complain too about YouTube, but they don't want to leave it. So I've decided that uh, it hurts me more not to be on it than it hurts for YouTube for me to get off it. And it also hurts some people who are just lazy. They are all tied into how this works and they don't want to go on to another platform. I can understand that. And I'm not out to harm the, the subscribers, obviously, and the people that want to hear me. I would just hope that it wouldn't have to be here. But maybe something will happen with YouTube. Either they'll stop what they're doing. or I don't want them to be forced to do anything. What I would prefer is that other companies would just build up. They, I, what I would think should happen is if YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all these companies, if they want to be publishers, well, then take away their 230 exemption. Let them be publishers. Let them shut off whoever they want. Let them promote whatever they want. Let them lose their uh, exemption from liability and let them lose half their audience. They're not going to do that. So now they're going to have to, I think they're going to have to, but they're not going to. So there's probably going to be, some government force, government action, and I just want to make these videos. I don't want to get involved with that, but it infringes on, infringes. All right, small gold, rah, rah, Rasputin, Coins AZ is finally here. Buy the Brooklyn Bridge with an ounce of silver, says Coins AZ. Yeah, of course. All right. Maybe Bernie will buy YouTube and completely socialize it. But well, the 1% have been running the YouTube, the Facebook, and all the social media channels. And if I'm elected president, then everything's going to be free, including a subscription to Small Gold's Patreon. Bernie, that won't work. Then I won't make any money. You're not supposed to make any money. Oh, all right. Well, Bernie, since you're here, why don't you give us the countdown? And uh, we'll see everyone tomorrow night. Okay, Bernie?
So I was supposed to, um, you want me to count? Yeah, yeah, that's what you do when you come on the show. Okay, so 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1%, 0. Have a good night. Have a good night, Bernie, and have a good night, small gold mug stackers and game chain.